Hello, welcome to this special training. It's titled The Ministry of Reconciliation. My name is Alberto Dwali, presiding pastor, Triumphant Nation Everywhere, and Chancellor, What a Blaze Academy, the training arm of What a Blaze Mission Ministry. The purpose of this lecture is to make you mindful of your role as a minister of reconciliation, as somebody that God had called and is expected to evangelize the nations. That, in a nutshell, is what this is about. It's going to be a very enriching and a blessing teaching, and I want Want you to get ready. I want to talk to you. It's going to be eight segments, so I want you to follow me. Number one thing I want to say to you is every member is a minister. The body of Christ does not have a useless part. The body of Christ does not have a useless part. When I was a young boy, I was very strong and healthy, but I used to have something called tussilitis. It is just a tussle, something my truth that used to disturb me. And I was talking in school one day. I said, Why didn't you come to school yesterday? I said, I had tussle. And he said, oh, my mom used to have it. They just went to some area in Nigeria and then somebody cut it off. I said, how oh, can they cut it off like that? The guy said, well, there's nothing the thing does in the body. So I told my mom the same thing. Mom said, well, when you see the doctor the next time, ask the doctor. When they saw the doctor, I said, excuse me, sir. They said, this tussle thing is stopping me. You can cut it off because it does not have a purpose. The doctor said something to me at a very young age. I've never forgotten. The doctor said, no part of your body is useless no part of your body is useless you are the body of christ so if you are the body of christ you cannot be a useless body every member of this body is a minister in four colossians 4 17 look at what paul said to them he wrote a letter to the colossians but then in chapter 4 verse 17 before he rounded up he said say unto Antipas." Take it to the ministry which you have received of the Lord that you fulfill it. Say unto Archippus, I don't know which Archippus I'm talking to today. Your name might not be Archippus, it might be Peter, it might be Paul, it might be Peter, Joshua, it might be David. I don't know what your name is, it might be Kelly. But all I'm trying to say to you is that it does not matter what your name is. This is what God is saying. Fulfill the ministry. Somebody said, I've not been called to ministry, I'm just an usher. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Peter 4.10. First Peter 4 10, he says, Every man hath received the gift, so let him minister. How many men? Every man. You and I, and no matter your gender, as every man hath received the gift, let him minister. That's a gift God has given you to me. The word minister means to serve. That's what it meant. It means to serve. So that is a gift you received of God to serve your generation, to serve your nation, to serve your congregation. When you are using that gift, you are ministering as an usher in the music department. In, uh, as in, in ISOP, as you claim God's auditorium, wherever you, you are, you are a minister. So he said, as every man had received the gift, I first began for ten, I let the minister seem to another as good steward of the manifold grace of God. What's a steward? Who is a steward? A steward is somebody that brings your food, but it's not the one that owns the food. It's not the one that cooks the food. It's just the connecting factor between the kitchen and the final consumer. That is what we heard. I am using my grace now. I collect it from God's heaven. You know, that's God's kitchen. And I serve it to you using my gift. So God wants to use you as a steward. So he said, as every man that received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good steward of the manifold grace of God. I love the word manifold there. It means many-sided grace of God derogated many sided i have my side you have your side so when you look around us you're going to see that pastor b has a side that reverend tj does not have and i mean has as a side that pastor um, godman does not have and pastor godman has a side that mrs beatrice does not have it's because the grace of god is many sided nobody has it all but together we have it all nobody has it all so the bible said every member in this body is a minister you have something to offer in ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 
to, to, to further build on that, he said, the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplied. So every joint must supply for the whole body to be able to function well. He said the body is joined, the body is knit together, but every joint must supply according to the effective working by which every part does its share. That is what causes the body to grow and edify itself in love. I love that. But unfortunately, I won't have time to build on that because that's not my topic. But all I'm trying to say to you is that a joint you need to supply by the effective working of your part. So if you do your share, then the body will grow. So every member is a minister. It does not matter what you think you are. I'm an usher, you're a minister. I'm in the children's department, you're a minister. I'm in ISOP, cleaning the church, you're a minister. Ah, I'm just in the choir, you're a minister. I'm just playing drums. You have received the gift, you minister, and as a joint, you need to supply. Number two thing I want to say, is that no matter your ministry though, the foundation ministry all of us share is the ministry of reconciliation. From being an usher to being an instrumentalist to be a cleaner to be to be in the protocol, no matter what you call what you do, you are in doing is making prayer and the power available by prayer. It does not matter what you do, whatever it is that you do, number one ministry we all have together. We might not all have the ministry of preaching or teaching or casting out devils or healing the sick or preaching to the nations and all that, but that is one we all have. It's called the ministry of reconciliation. Second Corinthians chapter 5 from the 17. See what Paul said in the letter to our brothers in Corinthians that affect us also. See what Paul said. Paul said in verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 5, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Hear that. He said, as many as in Christ, we are new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. How did you become a new creature? Verse 18. All things are of God. He reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And once he reconciled us to himself, he now gave unto us the ministry of reconciliation. So you were saved to save another. You were found to find another. You were preached to, to preach to another. You get what I'm saying? It's a ministry we all have. Verse 19 said, to which that God, who in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them had committed unto us also the word of reconciliation. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors of Christ. I may not be an ambassador of a nation, but I'm an ambassador of Christ. So as I move from nation to nation, I'm an ambassador. As you stand in your post as an usher, you are an ambassador. As you stand in your post as protocol, you are an ambassador. I always say to the triumphant nation that the protocol, you are ambassador to our guest, you are usher, you are ambassador. Before they met me, they met you. And the way you portray yourself is you are selling a product. They are seeing this is how Jesus' people are. If you are a Sunday school teacher teaching the kids and tenders, it's very important for you to know that you are an ambassador there. But you say, he said, the key thing is that God has called you and I to the ministry of reconciliation. I want you to look at three people and tell them you have a ministry, you have a ministry, you have a ministry. Yes, 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 yes. Point to them. Don't be afraid of their face. Say you have a ministry. You have a ministry. You have a ministry. Okay, now tell them what ministry it is. Say it's a ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling the world back to Jesus. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, we have a commission there. Every army has its own commission. What a commission, Mark 16, 15 to 18. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is 
baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They cast out devils. They speak with new tongues. They take up serpents and they drink any deadly thing. It will not on them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Few things I want you to notice here. Number one, say going to all the world. The world that does not mean nation. No, no, no. It means going to your groups. Yeah, it's people group. So the world there is go into what the Japanese we call an ohiko. An ohiko is our people group. So when he said going to all the world, he said going to the world of doctors. That's a people group. Going to the world of nurses. Going to the world of lawyers. Going to the world of market people. Going to the world of businessmen. Going to the world of students. Going to the world of children. So you need to know that all the worlds need Jesus and you are an ambassador to your world. So if you find yourself in your world, you are the minister of reconciliation to that world. So Mark 16, 15 to 18 is what we call the Great Commission. I love what Hudson Taylor said. Hudson Taylor is a was a missionary to China. He said the Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It's a commandment to be obeyed. The Great Commission is not an option you consider. It's a commandment you obey. Listen to me. It does not matter what is the matter. This is a commandment for you. You have a ministry. Is the ministry of, of reconciliation our commission is going to all the world and i don't care what else you do no matter what you do you are an ambassador of the ministry of reconciliation and don't let any other thing be more important to you than this ministry in Matthew chapter 9 we saw jesus our example he healed the paralytic in Matthew chapter 9 then after that he healed the woman with issue of blood then after that he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead then after that he healed two blind men then after that he healed a dumb man the man started hearing but yet in that same Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 when he saw the multitude he was moved with compassion because they fainted and they were scattered abroad like sheep without a shepherd so I don't care what you're doing you are casting out devils you're a great preacher if you are not winning souls you are a fraud oh no my job is to be an usher if you are not winning souls in the ministry of reconciliation you don't understand your ministry the greatest commission whatever you do there is one ministry that join us together is the ministry of reconciliation and you and i need to know it's a big job somebody said whatever i've been doing it to this year i've won at least one soul to christ one soul one soul you don't understand they gave us the statistics that every day 500 people have been born into the world every day since morning till now 500 tomorrow 500 the day after 500 then they say that about 300 people are dying every day so as they're giving back to 500 about 300 people are dying which means every day there are 200,000 more people to be saved 200,000 more people every day every day so it does not matter how many souls you won yesterday come on now get off your bomb and let's go work again and it does not matter what you do you are a doctor but you're also a minister of reconciliation oh you're a nurse but also a minister of you're a cosmetic cosmetician but you are also a minister of reconciliation you are a student in that your world you're a minister of reconciliation exodus chapter 33 makes me shiver when I was taught as a young Christian, Exodus 33 from the Ezekiel, sorry, Ezekiel 33 from the 6, the Bible said, if you are a watchman and you see the worst word is coming and you refuse to blow your trumpet and the people are no one and this word came and take every person and they die, that blood will be required from your hand. That is to say, your job is to warn the people when danger is coming and you saw danger coming and you didn't want them and they kill all of them of course you are liable you're going to be held responsible verse 7 said oh son of man you are the watchman in your wall in that place where god that put you he didn't send you to that place to work because he can't feed you he's feeding the birds in the air it's not because he wants to clothe you he's clothing flowers every day Matthew chapter 6 jesus said so why is he giving you a job that you can have a world where you are going to be an ambassador the steward of god to perform your ministry 
ministry of reconciliation. I don't care where you live. You are an ambassador, the minister of reconciliation there. Where you walk, you are the minister of reconciliation there. That family you married into, you are the minister of reconciliation there. He said, if you don't do it, I require the blood from your hand for seven. Oh, son of man, you have this set man over this house. Therefore, if you do not take this word, I will require the blood from your hand. Verse 8 said, when I say wicked, that will die. If you do not speak and want them, then I will require their blood from your head. So somebody said, but Reverend, that's Old Testament. I'm a New Testament grace believer. It does not matter. If, if I don't pray, God will not require the blood from my hand. Look at Acts 16, 18 verse 6. Acts 18 verse 6. This is Paul speaking. Paul said, and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, your blood is on your own head. I'm clean from henceforth. I will go to the Gentiles. What is he trying to say? I've done my part. I've preached unto you. Your blood is not on my head. Your blood is on your own head. So he's saying, trying to say that that blood is no longer on his head. It's on theirs because he has preached to them. Then Paul in Acts chapter 20 and um, verse 25, look at what he said, 25, 26, 27. I love this. And now behold, I know that ye all, among whom have come preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Verse 26 of Acts chapter 20. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I'm pure from the blood of all men. Verse 27, for I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. God. See what he said. He said, this is the thing. I'm pure of the blood of all men because I've taught you from house to house. I've taught you the counsel of God, which means if I've not taught you, maybe your blood would have been on my head. I'm saying to you, professor. I'm saying to you, barista. I'm saying to you, nurse. I'm saying to you, teacher. I'm saying to you, businessman, importer and exporter, general merchant. I'm saying to you, um, 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 real tall real estate agent i'm saying to you if you don't fulfill your ministry if you don't go to your or equal your wall to be the minister of reconciliation god said how require the blood on your head some of you you watch television you watch and you laugh at people say he's a wicked man can you imagine a disaster was coming to town he knew he didn't want anybody what a wicked man and yet you know that they're going to die if rapture does not happen to take us and they be left behind one day they will die and meet with death and yet what have you done i remember an unbeliever said to me once he said i don't believe in jesus because if what you people are saying is true if there is a heaven if there is a hell if i believe it i won't handle it where you're handling it i'll be on the street preaching to everybody telling them to be reconciled to god i'm here to call you to your calling your calling is to be reconciled to god so remember number one that is every member is a minister that is no part of the body that is a waste Ephesians 4 16 said that is every joint must supply every joint and the Bible said to us in the book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 17 said to every believer to fulfill the calling that receive of God and 1 Peter 4 10 makes us to realize that all of us we have received the gift so we are minister and good steward of the manifold grace of god number two we all have the same ministry underlining ministry ministry of reconciliation no matter what you do no matter the grace you carry no matter where you walk some people call it secular spiritual there is nothing like that the so-called secular is your medium your platform to be your ministers and ambassador and the ministry is a ministry of reconciliation and mark chapter 15 16 gave us a great commission and it is not a suggestion. So right, very quickly, I want to give you seven great thoughts on evangelism that drives me. Seven great thoughts on evangelism. Number one, Isabel Khan was a missionary to China and Thailand several years ago. He said, she said something that I've kept on meditating on, said, I believe that in each generation, God has called enough men and women to evangelize all that yet unreached people of the earth. It is not God who does not 
not called. It is men that if teams to respond. Oh my God. He's saying in every nation, every generation, every congregation, God had enough people to evangelize that world in your office. God has enough people to evangelize your office in your area. God has enough people to evangelize your area in your home, your compound. God has enough people to evangelize your home. So the problem is not God that is not calling. The problem is you that you refuse to yield. A man from Ghana, Bishop Saki, said something very powerful. He said, I'm beginning to believe that it's not the sin of the world that is making the church to be saved, but rather the sin and the concern of the church is what is making the world sick. Yeah, did you get her? He said, I'm be beginning to believe that it's not the sin of the world that is making the church to be sick. No, it is the sin of the church and the apathy of the church, the unconcern of the church that is making the world sick because the church is not rising up to their responsibility. Number one quote that makes my heart to burn is by James Calvert. James Calvert was a missionary to the cannibals in Fiji Island. Did you hear me say cannibals? Cannibals are people that eat human flesh. And when they got to Fiji Island and they were telling them, we're going to the cannibals to preach to them, people told them, if you go there, you die. They will kill you. You know what James Calvert said? He said, come on now. We died before we came here. Oh my God. We died there. We died before we came here. Before we came here, we have already said, this war is me. If I don't preach the gospel, if I preach, I perish. If I don't preach, I perish. I'm going to preach the gospel. Number four, this one also makes my heart to burn for evangelism. Hear this. This man said, everything in the world is broken. Confidence in government, broken. Confidence in dollars, broken. Marriages are breaking up every day. The youth, they're breaking up their virginity every day. All is broken, except the act of believers, the major thing that needs to be broken. What a shame. Every other thing is broken, except what should really be broken. The heart of believers. Is your heart still broken for God? Is your heart broken to reach the ungodly? Is your heart broken to preach the gospel? To tell somebody, can you go across the street for the Jesus that went to the cross for you? He went to the cross for you. Can you go across the streets for him? Can you cross your table to another table for him? Can you go talk to somebody about him? You need to understand that. I know what John Wesley said of United Kingdom in those days, great evangelists winning souls to God. He said something, something powerful. He said, you have only one business in the world, and that business is to win souls. I don't care what other business you have. It might pay your bills, but it does not give you a celebration in heaven. The only business on earth that makes you celebrated in heaven is the business of winning souls. William Booth, number six, William Booth was a founder of the Salvation Army. The Queen wanted to knight him in UK, wanted to knight William Booth, and the Queen asked him a question, William Booth, what's your passion? William Booth was silent for a long time. Then all of a sudden, he lifted up his eyes and his voice, and he replied, he said, some people's passion is for gold, and some people's passion is for silver, but my passion is for souls, souls, and souls, oh my God. What is your passion? Is your passion for gold? Is your passion for silver? Is your passion for dollars? Is your passion for pounds? Is your passion for a bigger mansion? Is your passion for a better car? Or is your passion for soul? I'm here to challenge you, boy. I'm here to challenge you, sir. I'm here to challenge you, ma. What is your passion? Is your passion for gold or silver? Or is your passion for souls? I remember the real bunking now of oh, bless me memory that said I see a blood washed Africa it came from Germany and he was preaching from city to city from village to village all over Africa one day he had the privilege of a self addressing 
He also parliament in Kenya. And when he finished his address, he said, right now, I want to make an altar call. And somebody quickly walk up to him and say, Mr. Ray Bunke, I'm sorry. This is the house of parliament. You can make altar call here. It's against the protocol. To which Ray Bunke reply, I know no protocol. All I know is altar call. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I know no protocol. All I know Oh, it's all to call. I'm trying to say what is born in your heart. David Livingstone in those days, he, stand, he, he knelt down in the midst of snow and he was praying and his his, his, his out of his face was so much sweat and he was praying one prayer Lord give me souls or take my soul give me souls or take my soul unfortunately we have a generation now that are saying God give me a husband or I die give me a wife or I die give me a child or I die give me a Benz or I die what a generation Lord come on now Stir up our heart back to evangelism. Connect us back to our calling and our purpose, to our ministry of reconciliation. I pray for you, my brother. I pray for you, my sister, that you will not let your passion be for gold and silver and a bigger house and a better tie and a beautiful soul. I have all that, but I'm saying don't put your passion there. Let your passion be for souls. Go for souls. Dream so I love what your peer said, but Pierce was the founder of of world vision. Unfortunately, world vision now is going secular. They are not even based on the foundation of our peers. But peers started world vision with only one body. He said, Lord, let my heart be burdened with the things that burden the mind of Christ. Let my mind be broken. Let my heart be broken with what breaks the heart of Christ. I'm saying to you, it's not a bigger car that's breaking his heart. It's not a bigger house was breaking the heart of Jesus. His soul started lost souls that are lost second corinthians 5 verse 14 second corinthians 5 14 paul said the love of christ constrained us as the love constrain you many a time the law is constraining you from sharing with your neighbor the good news of jesus the law is constraining you and the lost in your heart is constraining you from talking to people about jesus but what should constrain you should be the love of christ in first corinthians 9 22 i love what Paul said, First Corinthians 9 22, Paul said to the weak, I become weak, that I may gain the weak, and made all things to all men, by that by all means I might save some. That is Apostle Paul. He said, I become all things to all men, by all means that I might save some. I'm saying to you, become all things to all men, so you can save some. Come on now, if you need to put on your jeans and your sunglasses and your face cap and go preach to those boys that dress like that, go ahead and do it. If you need to put on a tie, though you don't like put on a tie because you want to appeal to some executives, go ahead and do it. I'm saying to you, the purpose of your salvation is so that you can save. Listen to me very carefully. I say it every time to them in Nigeria, some missionaries from Europe. They crossed the sea 21 days in those days, or sometimes three months uh, to come to Africa, what was called the, the white man's grave, because when they come, many of them, mosquito will bite them, and they die, and they knew those days there were no malaria tablets, but yet they came, some of them died, they didn't have beautiful houses, they were staying in huts, taking their bath in the river, they came to preach to you, so they preached, and you God saved and now you are saved. You are not preaching to anybody. Don't be a wasted investment. You are saved to save others. You are preached to, to preach to others. You were converted to be a converter. That is the plan of God. Don't be a wasted investment. Somebody said, but Reverend, where do I start? That is what I want to share with you. But don't forget what we have said. Number one, everybody is a minister. There is no wasted member of the body of Christ. God that called you, God that called me to be a minister, Colossians 4, 17, he said, don't fail in your calling. See on track, keep us. 
that he fulfill the reason why I call him. Say unto Archippus that he fulfill the reason why I call him. First Peter 4 10, he said, As all of you have received the gift, so minister as good steward of the manifold gift of God. Minister, Ephesians 4 16, he said, Every joint will supply that one makes the body of Christ to grow. So, number one, every member is a minister. Number two, we all have the same ministry. It's called the ministry of reconciliation. That is your ministry. That is my ministry. It's the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling the world to Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 17, 18, 19, 20 makes us to realize that the Mark 16, 15, 17, 18 talks about the great commission going through all your world and preach the gospel and this sign shall follow. Somebody said to me, Reverend, you lay on the sick, they get healed. You cast out devils, they live. I try to do it. It's not happening. I said, the Bible said, this sign shall follow them that believe. You move for they won't stand. If you stand, if we stand with you. If you move, we will follow you. The reason why you have not seen the signs is because you have not move. That's why that you've not seen the miracles. When you move, you will see miracles. When you move, you will see miracles. And we saw that the great commission is not a suggestion, it's a commission. Then we saw quotations by great men of God. And the Bible said, if you don't pray the gospel, it's the three. He said the blood will be on your head. And Paul said, Acts 18, 6, your blood be on your own head because I preach unto you. Acts 20, 25, I'm pure of the blood of all men because I preach unto you. I'm saying to you today, be praying like Bob Pierce. Say, God, let my heart be broken with the things that break your heart. Give me two. I'm going to give you one minute. Open your mouth and say, Lord, let my heart be broken with the things that break your heart. Let my heart be broken with the things that break your heart. Let my heart be broken, Lord, with the things that break your heart. Let my heart be broken. Give me the heart of a soul winner. Give me the heart of a soul winner. In the name of Jesus. So somebody say, okay now, Reverend, where do I start from? I'm glad you asked. This is where to start from. John chapter 1 verse 40. See how the movement of Jesus started. See how the Jesus, original Jesus movement, see how it started. John chapter 1 verse 40. And one of the two which had John spake and followed him was Andrew, Simeon, Peter's brother. He first find that his own brother Simeon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah which is being interpreted in Christ. We have found the Messiah which is being interpreted in Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simeon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel. And the day following, he also go forth into Galilee. And he find that Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip find that Nathaniel and said unto him, We had found him of whom Moses is the law. I want you to notice a few things. John chapter 1 verse 40, the Bible said two of them had John speak. They followed John. But Andrew, Simon Peter, Simon Peter's brother, he went to find his own brother, Simon Peter, Amy. Two of them had him. They followed Jesus. One went to find his brother. His name was mentioned. If you are not winning souls, you are not relevant to the kingdom. If you are not winning souls, you are not relevant to the two of them followed him. We don't know the name of the other guy. It's not relevant. He didn't find nobody. But look at this. He went to find his brother. Then verse 42. He brought him to Jesus. Do you see? Not only did he find him, he brought him. Then the Bible said unto us that verse 42 also that Jesus himself called Philip and Nathaniel. Verse 43. And then Jesus went into Galilee and found Philip. Did you see the word? Fine, bring, call. And verse 45, Philip find that Nathaniel. That is how they started expanding. So number one thing I want you to know, how the John chapter 1 verse 40, is that two of them followed him. Only one of them became relevant because he found his brother. Hmm. Oh my God. Number two, find your brother. That's where to start from. Where do I start from? Find your brother. That is somebody already close to you. Somebody that when you find a new place where they sell good suit, is the first to tell. Somebody when you discover where they sell good food, you call them on the phone. Somebody, 
Oh, I, I remember when I got saved in the city of Ibadu, Nigeria. I was in church dancing. Then I saw my friend. We used to go to parties together. We were teenagers. And after the service, I rushed to him. I hugged him. I said, oh, Papa, you are here. Oh, my God, you are here. Good to see you. He looked at me very annoyed. He said, so you have been here. This is where you come. And you never told me. He said, I will not do that to you. Because if, you find, if I find a party happening, I will tell you. If I know a gig is going to take place somewhere, I will tell you. So you started coming here, you didn't tell me. I don't like that. I have to apologize. You know that kind of a brother. That's the first thing. Go for your brother. Go for your brother. Bible said in verse 41, John chapter 1, he first find that his own brother Simeon. Then he sent to him, we have found the Messiah. Number two, find an associate. Find an associate. Verse 43, then the Bible said, if Jesus find that Philip, an associate. So number one, your brother, number two, an associate. Look at verse 44. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip find that Nathaniel, find a neighbor, find a brother, find an associate, find a neighbor. Verse 45. Philip find that Nathaniel. I love this. And oh my God. And Nathaniel sent on to him, verse 46. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip sent on to him, come and see. One of the major ways you're going to evangelize, you tell people, come and see. Oh, people will tell you, I don't like church pastors. Pastors are fake. Tell them, come and see. Church, people in church are hypocrites. Come and see. Well, I don't like church. I feel out of place. Come, stop arguing with people. Tell them, come and see. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. In our own church, Triumphant Nation, I've taught this several times. That so you see from there the principle, what I call France. F-R-A-N-S. France. F. R A N S. I'm not talking about France, the nation. I'm talking about France. F R A N S, the mission target. What do you mean by that? F for friends, R for relatives, A for associates, N for neighbors, S for social media, France. Let me say that again F for friends. So that's where we start from. We start from our friends. You look into your circle. I remember in those days when we got saved, that's what we started doing. We write down the name of all our friends and we were tackling them one after the other. So you start with your friends. Like I said, those friends, that if there is a new thing, they will call you. Those friends, that if there is a new party, they will call you. Those friends, that if something new is happening, they, are, you are, they, they will call you. Those are your friends. Start with your friends. They move to your relatives. In those days, my mom's extended family were Muslim. And then it became a news all over the family. Don't send your son or your daughter to do Juwale's house for vacation. If they go there, they come back born again. Don't send them, relatives. So after you, you go for your friends, you go for your relatives, you go for your associates, those people you work together. You go for your associates, then you go for neighbors, your neighbors, people in your building, people that are your neighbors. Then finally, your social media platform. So this is it. Whenever I'm driving and I see a dead body, I ask myself, who was the last believer that was a neighbor to that man and didn't preach the gospel to him? Who was the last believer that served him in a restaurant and did not preach the gospel to him? Who was the last believer that gave her money and didn't preach to her? Who was the last believer that, that, that interviewed her in a job that didn't preach to her? I look at ladies and I say, so a guy can call you to toast you. A guy can call you to date you. And you don't preach the gospel to them. They are selling death. You have life. You can't sell life. Somebody can do, do you cold call to call you teleconference uh, to, to, to sell something to you that has no eternal value. But you have eternal value. You can't preach to them. Oh my God, the devil is a liar. I pray that you'll be baptized today with the baptism of fire for the ministry of reconciliation. It's very, very important. Somebody said to me, so Reverend, what are you saying? That's where you start. You start with your friends. You start with your friends. You start with your relatives. You start with, as I said, you start with neighbors and you start with your social media. Let me say this to you. I've looked at everywhere I've passed through. In, that's how my churches normally grow. Everywhere I pastor. All I need is somebody from a house. That's what I need. Somebody from a school. 
somebody from a business, somebody from a group, because that is what the Bible said. He said, go into all the world, go into your ohiko, ohiko are people around you. So somebody said, are you saying I should go and be a missionary to Timbuktu? No, your mission field is around you. See that John chapter 1, see where they started from the Jesus movement. They were just moving like this to a neighbor, to a friend, to a brother, to an associate. They were moving to people around them. That is where to start from. Your mission field is around you. Your mission field. I mean, look at three people and point to them and say, your mission field is around you. Your mission field is around you. Your mission field is around you. Your mission field is in the midst of your friends, in the midst of your relatives, in the midst of your associates, in the midst of your neighbors, in the midst of your social media. So one of the things I've discovered, if one person starts coming from a family, before you know it, they become two. They become three they become four then one of them will bring a co-worker and that co-worker will bring another co-worker then one of them will bring a neighbor that neighbor will also bring the husband or the wife that is how everywhere i pastor had always grown i'm saying to you that if the church is going to grow it's on you some people say this church is not growing it's the pastor no shepherds give back to shepherds and sheep give back to sheep a shepherd that gives birth to a sheep will be on CNN. It never happened before. It's a strange news. So I make you a shepherd. You bring sheep. So if you're coming from a family, go get your friend. Go get your relative. Go get your associate. Go get your neighbor. Go get your social media people. So let me now move to number five as I round up this training today and we will continue next time. But here it is. Here it is. So I want to give you the tips of being a witness so reverend have had you i want to do this ministry of reconciliation i want to be outreach minded i want to go for souls i want to do the things you have taught me to do now how do i start where do i go how do i become a witness i want to give you the tips and the tips is t-i-p-s the word tips is what forms it if you will lay this to heart it will become very easy for you to do number one t Tell your stories. <laughs> it will shock you. That when I'm saying go preach the gospel. Oh yes, when we were younger, they taught us the Romans way to salvation. Beautiful way. And you need to study that. That's my sermon for you. Go learn the Romans way to salvation. But you know what I've discovered? In about 30, over 30 years of being a Christian, that nothing wins souls like telling your story. I was blind. Now I see. I was living like this, but now I live like this. I didn't know God, but now I know Him. I didn't know peace, but now I have peace. I used to be a crook, now I'm a saint. Your story, your story, don't joke with it. Your salvation story is key. Get it ready, put it on your lips. When you meet people and say, hello, how are you, how are you doing? Can you tell me about yourself? You ask them, tell me about yourself. Then you say, well, you know, I went to Yale. I went to University of Toronto. I went to University of Ibado. I'm married with two children and all that. You to say, oh, that's good. I'm actually, actually a barista also. I went to law school and all that. But you know, I was living like this, living like this, living like this. Then one day, somebody invited me to Christ. And I gave my life to Jesus and my life turned around. Before now, I couldn't sleep well. I didn't have peace. Now I have peace. Do you get that? Get your story ready. Number one tip on evangelism, tell your story. Number two, invite to church. Yes, invite to church. You see, when you invite people to church, I tell you every time in Triumphant Nation, I tell my people, it is a trifold partnership. You bring them, I preach to them, God save them. Simple. I need you to bring them. God need me to preach to them. I need God to save them. <laughs> So the three of us know our function. You need to bring them. God and you depend on me to preach to them. You and I depend on God to save them. But do you know of that tripod? Your part is the most strongest. If you don't bring them, I don't get to preach to them, God might not get to save them. So not only tell your story, 
The eye is invite to church, invite to church where they will hear the word of God. How can somebody invite you to a restaurant, invite you, and you say in the Western world will make it look easy. They can invite you to disco, invite you to the bar, invite you to the club, invite you to nudist colony, and you are careful inviting them to church. No, invite them to church. A M R M P. Pray for the unreached. I don't believe a believer. You are praying for what to wear, what to eat, where to walk. If that is all your prayer, you are not different from a Muslim or a Buddhist or a reverent person that does not know God. If your prayer does not include salvation of souls, you pray. And today, as we're going to round up, we're going to spend, that's my second assignment. Number one assignment, go and land the Roman widow to salvation. Number two, we're going to spend the next five, ten minutes praying for souls. Pray for the unreached. Pray. As I've been in Canada, Ontario, I wake up in the morning and I'm praying for revival in this land. What a beautiful nation. But no revival. No revival. We talk about UK, we talk about great men of God out of UK. We talk about America, too many to mention from Kenneth Copeland to Kenneth Hagen. To Benny Hinn, you talk about Canada, you can mention two or three that people know. Great nation, no gospel. We need revival here. And S, show your miracles. So T for tell your story, I for invite to church, P for pray for the rich, S for show your miracles. Show your miracles! I remember one man, they asked him, how do you get to save a old village? You came to this village and you saved them. The guy said, all I do. It's when I meet somebody for the first time, I tell them, what God do you serve? When they tell him about their God, say, tell me what your God has done for you lately. Then he starts to tell them what his own God had done for him. Say, I have leukemia, he healed me. I was confused, my own God gave me direction. <clears throat> gave me a good wife, my marriage is working. Show your miracles. Show your miracles. Show your miracles. That is the tips. T for tell your stories. I for invite the church. P for pray for the rich. Show your miracles. Stand on your feet, everybody. I'm about to round up. There's going to be a part B of this training. But for now, I want us to pray. I want you to open your mouth and start to pray for the rich around you. For your as friends, for your um, relatives, for your associates, for your neighbors and your social media fans. Open your mouth and start to pray. Lord, the God of this world that blinded their minds. I rebuke you, God of this world. Let there be revival in my oiku, in my domain, in my world. Lord, give me the grace, the ministry of reconciliation to fulfill my calling. I want to fulfill my calling, Lord. I want to fulfill my calling, Lord. I want to fulfill my calling. Some of the pray, pray, pray. I want to fulfill my calling, Lord. Give me grace to preach to the unreached. I pray for people around me in my circle, my friends, my associates, my neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. We are still going to pray. But I want you to do something between now and the next training. I want you to write the name of a friend, the name of a relative, the name of a neighbor, the name of an associate that you pray for and do these tips. Tell your story with them, invite them to church, pray for them, and then show them your miracles. Stand up, don't sit down yet. Let's continue praying until the body is revived in you to win souls. I love you. Bless you.